light a wave or is it a particle? Well, the answer is both. Light exhibits wave-particle duality, which means it can behave both as a wave and as a particle. Now that's pretty weird, right? To take a look at this further, we are going to delve into the limits of what the universe will let us measure, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, using lasers to measure wavelength and when this wavelength becomes dangerous. Let's start by taking a look at one of the most famous experiments in the history of physics, Young's double slit experiment. For this, we're going to need a dark room. Right at the beginning of the 19th century, Thomas Young shone a beam of light through two parallel slits and projected the resulting light onto a screen. What he saw was a really beautiful pattern, which we now call an interference or diffraction pattern. Now classically, this can only happen if light is a wave, and it occurs because the two rays of light interfere with one another. They can either add together or cancel each other out, and this gives rise to the series of bright and dark spots known as maxima and minima. So at this point, it's looking like light has to be a wave. But what about Newton and his particle theory of light? This meant slowing things down, and it turns out that even if we make the light arrive at the slits one photon at a time, the diffraction pattern will still appear, but it's not instantaneous. It builds up slowly as photons arrive at the screen one by one at random points in the diffraction pattern. In this manner, the photons are detected at the screen as a particle, but we know that the interference pattern can only occur if the photons pass through both slits simultaneously, behaving as a wave. Now this is where it gets really interesting. If we decide to look and see which slit the photon goes through, the diffraction pattern disappears and light behaves as a particle. The very act of us taking a measurement has completely changed the way that light behaves. Now this is nuts. How can us just looking at a system change the outcome? This quandary lies right at the heart of quantum mechanics within Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. It imposes a fundamental limit of what is measurable and what we can make sense of. It's almost like nature's trying to hide our secrets from us when we try and look too closely. And although frustrating, this is a beautiful part of science where we get this blending between physics and philosophy as we reach our limit of scientific exploration. Now a practical use of the diffraction pattern is that we can use it to calculate the wavelength of light that's causing it. It's important to know the wavelength because this will tell us what application we can use the light for and how dangerous it is. The danger comes from the energy of the light which is directly related to the wavelength using E equals hc over lambda, where E is the energy, h is Planck's constant, c is the speed of light and lambda is the wavelength. Now the energy of a light source determines how photons can interact with matter. As an example, as we move towards the higher energies of the electromagnetic spectrum, we get towards the ionising radiation region. Now in this region, the photons are capable of stripping off electrons from the atoms that it interacts with, and it can be very dangerous to living tissue. It literally rips electrons off us as it tears through our bodies. As humans, we need to either limit or avoid this type of radiation altogether, as it can damage our cells and lead to cancerous tumours. So to make our measurement of the wavelength easier, we are going to use coloured light that sits in the visible spectrum. This means that we can see the light and we can use our eyes as the detector. We'll also use a single wavelength or monochromatic light source from this laser unit. This unit has been specifically designed for the student laboratory and its lasers have been calibrated to have a combined power of less than one milliwatt. This power rating is important because at this level and below, your blink reflex is quick enough to save your eyes anywhere above this level and damage can be done before you have the time to blink. Remember when using lasers to never point them at other people or yourself, especially when using laser pointers as these can have wildly inaccurate power ratings. Instead of using a double slit like Young, we are going to use one of these, a diffraction grating, and this is an optical component that contains a large amount of equally spaced parallel slits. Now this particular diffraction grating has got 600 lines per millimetre and we can position it vertically in a slide carrier. Now we're choosing to use this over the double slit because the diffraction pattern through this will be much more defined and it will have sharper diffraction spots. So let's turn the laser on, aim it at the diffraction grating, and if we take a look at the interference pattern, we can see that it appears as a series of bright spots known as diffraction maxima. So the geometry of these spots is shown in this diagram. Now if we apply trigonometry to this system, we can see that tan theta equals x over l. So the distances that we need to measure are x and l. So x is the distance from the central maximum to the nth order diffraction peak, l is the distance from the grating to the screen, 
and then if we divide those values and take the inverse tan, we can then use our value for theta to sub into the grating equation, which is n lambda equals d sine theta, where n is the order of the diffraction maximum, lambda is the wavelength, d is the slit separation, and theta is the diffraction angle. We can measure x for all the different diffraction maxima that we see, and we can use that data to create a plot of sine theta on the y-axis against n on the x-axis. If we compare the grating equation to the linear line equation, we can see that this plot will yield a gradient of lambda over d, and we can rearrange that to work out the wavelength. So let's get some data. Now we can use this data to plot a graph and by taking the linear fit we can then use the gradient to calculate a value for wavelength which is 681 nanometers. By comparing this to the actual value of 650 nanometers we can see that we've measured the wavelength to within 5% error. This demonstrates that this is an effective method to measure the wavelength. Now this unit also has a green laser output so this means that we can repeat the experiment but with green light. We also have the advantage of shining both red and green light through the grating at the same time, so we can see how the wavelength affects the spacing of the diffraction pattern. So this laser unit is also capable of modulation, so that means that we can use it to measure the speed of light. We're going to shoot this video soon, so please subscribe to make sure that you don't miss it, and please let us know in the comments what other videos you'd like to see from us. Thanks for watching.